uh, Shrewsbury, or Shrewsbury, kind of 50 50 how you pronounce it. Day off, so I thought I'd pop out and actually do something with it, get my arse up early. Shrewsbury flies only mere miles from the Welsh border, so it's got a lot of influence from Welsh side as well, about nine miles, I believe. Even though Shropshire is like the birthplace of industry, you wouldn't really guess it walking around the streets of uh, Shrewsbury. Filled with all these like nice old Georgian and timber frame buildings. 1628. Wonder what the asking price is for that. A whopping 20p to cross over the bridge. I think the River Severn, if I'm not mistaken, is the longest river in the UK. It sort of starts somewhere in Wales. Little paddle boats you can get, or motor boats I think actually there. See all like the weeping willows hanging down. Nice effect. Come up to uh, St. Chad's Church near Glasgow Church from the 1790s. A bit different because it's got a uh, circular nave at the back. See the circular nave. Very typical sort of Georgian look about it. Feels more like a sort of Congress Hall in the shape of it. Not sure what the significance of that is. So I think that's uh, Providence there uh, with the cherubs in the middle. Don't know if you can get up there at the moment though, I presume not. And with this initial atrium part as well, circular shape is all more of like an oval shape. So. Can't think of many other churches or can think of one come to my mind like this similar shape. It's a bit dramatic. I don't know the hat's supposed to be, but Gabriel maybe. Wings. A bit scary to be honest. Yeah, my statue of uh, Hercules hanging out. Large Victorian houses, bad gardens, just come down and get in your boat, go for a little uh, evening sojourn along the uh, River Severn. Just go down the steps from your back garden, hop in your little boat. It's the life I think isn't it? There's been a bridge here for hundreds of years, I think this one's from 1600s, 17th century I think. Theatre over there, modern theatre. This tower is part of the uh, large market hall in the centre. Have a little walk through. Looks like they've had to uh, put sort of tape across to try and hold some of the beams together. Pressure. Just want to check out this building quickly. It's like an old timber frame building that's been adapted. See the older brickwork there. And it's had like a Georgian refronting. See the old beams there then. Like with many uh, buildings in historic towns in England, a lot of them are much older than they initially appear. Often being remodelled over the years in different styles. So this uh, classic Tudor building just opposite me, but it had the uh, restoration in 1990. Um, strangely, during the restoration, the head of Margaret Thatcher and Michael Hesseltan, Conservative politicians, added to the top there, and behind the uh, Texan poll tax. A bit of a random addition to an old historic building. Probably there's uh, other buildings, I don't think it's on that same building, but a bust of um, or kind of engraving of Mick Jagger and one of them as well, but I'm not sure which building it is. Keeping my eyes peeled then. To the main square here. Unfortunately it's uh, taken up by on one side by 70s carbuncle. Look to the other side, pretend it doesn't exist. The old market hall. This particular building erected in 1596 used to be all like the old cloth market, but I believe there's been a market on the site since about the 1260s. Did actually lay empty for a long time and then converted into a cinema in 2004. Don't know if the cinema's upstairs. And there's the entrance there. Smallest cinema entrance I think I've ever seen. It's had many uses over the years as well as a market hall. It's been a bomb shelter during the Second World War and the bomb shelter was in the lower part. It started in 1595, completed in 1596. The ground floor was actually a corn market. I think upstairs was the, uh, yeah, the drapery. One of the main uh, surviving Elizabethan buildings. 
in the town, not wander down the uh, interestingly named Gullet Passage. Must be one of the uh, so-called shoots. Like in uh, York has its shambles. I think in Shrewsbury they have the, what they call shoots, similar. Like little cup crews. Grow playing there. Probably means it was like uh, the brothel street back in the day. St. Alkman's, that's the name of the church. Bit of a strange name, sounds almost sort of like a Nordic to me. There's one's grave there, someone's parked on. Original smoke free public house. This brickwork changes, so the lower part looks like it's older and newer. Part of the top of the tower. Seems like a lot more of the uh, independent shops around here. Very nice uh, historic part of the town. Fourteenth century historic pub, there you go. Bit ironic that it's surrounded mainly by pubs and wineries and stuff now. Oh, is it? It's yeah, hard to see from here, isn't it? Uh, a lot of alterations done to the abbey in the sort of Georgian yeah. century during his during his reign. And, it's, it's, yeah. uh, and the two figures either side of the window, in St Peter and St Paul. Oh, right, this yeah. is actually the Abbey Church of St Peter and St Paul. So oh right, it's a full yeah. name, yeah. Yeah. The window itself is dates from the uh, 1380s. So there was a big alteration done in the, in the 14th century. Yeah. It's St Julian's Church over there, looks like it's changed. They yeah. changed the tower, like the lower, well, older part. And then... Yeah, uh, there, there was a lot of work done. Telford was employed to put a road through town at some stage, but it was didn't it? really work, he had to go around the edge. Yeah. So he wanted to get St Altman's down and St Julian's. Knock it down. Yeah. But they, they, they decided halfway through that St Julian should stay. He tried to knock St Altman down, but you, you could only get the nave down, the tower wouldn't go. Yeah. So they rebuilt the nave in the late right. 1700s. Right. If, if you look at it carefully, it's got gothic windows, but they're a the cast iron frame. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. got carried away, didn't yeah, he? So right. yeah. <laughs> in the name of yeah. progress. <laughs> What's going on here? You moving this stuff out? Or? Oh, we had a summer fair. Oh, so right. There's a lot of junk left after it, so we're, we're oh, getting rid at the moment. Stuff you could. That's nice, nice effect there. Bit unusual, like a sort of arcade. Just the more important people, coats of arms, large tombstones there. Fleur de Lis. Nice grand dog in there. Obviously from later years. 14th century part of the church there. It sounds be how, how faded it is. Someone's uh, grave here too. No font. It's like a 14th century. Right? Honourable Sir Richard Ons, Onslow, Baron Speaker of the House of Commons, the Eighth Queen Anne. So Queen Anne would have been the uh, sort of later Baroque era. The angel, like a crow, I think, something to do with death. I'm just missing his face now. Familiar name in the town, um, Roger de Montgomery, relative William the Conqueror. He wielded a lot of power in the town around that time. I believe he actually gave most of the land in Shropshire, or around Shrewsbury, I forget which one, to another gentleman who was actually recorded as the richest man in history as a result. Didn't know you could walk right up here. It's quite good, you get a better look.
quite far, set quite far back then if you're in the pews probably quite an echo delay as well Shrewsbury Abbey founded AD 1083 so that's around sort of doomsday book time and tapestry see all the mechanisms at the back of the organ even bigger than the actual front of the organ itself Here a part of it's been destroyed, obviously much bigger at one point during the uh, civil wars or not. See part of the window survived at least though. Didn't the fish smell already hit me? Gins, which I'll buy clothes here, though you can probably stink of fish and all sorts of like side by side. A really strong wave of deja vu. Felt like I've walked around here before, but I'm pretty sure I haven't never been in it. There's a little wine shop here. Must be open later than I thought then. It's a fresh produce from the uh, surrounding farms and Shropshire. Tea and dumplings, I think. Vietnamese, I think. It's interesting. Seem to be like almost street, little street food places. Place to come if you're looking for uh, spices. You always have that one spice that you're looking for. Seems impossible to find. Very cool little spots, like a mix indoor food market. Market used to look like, called Knocked It Down Victorian Market. Bogger hide looking dragon. The king's head. Looks like they building itself so had a few too many. Managed to stand all these hundreds of years. Sod's so like full of my head just as I'm walking by. Henry the seventh, fourteen eighty five. Shrewsbury's famous and most famous native, Charles Darwin, naturalist. We just don't have to uh, explain who he is. He actually went to school here, studied here. Born in like 1809 in the town, studied here. I believe it's now a library though. Buildings from the mid 16th century itself. Converted to a library in 83. Looks of old and new, modern. Portrait on the wall of Charles Darwin as soon as you walk in. Looking down here. I think so, your bog standard library inside. Quick look around the castle grounds. Some old artillery, weaponry. Looks sort of wet, Second World War. Very cool. This gun was used at Oswestry Town, not too far away. Training gunners between 39 and 68. Is that the uh, fling the rocks? I think I forget what you call them. It's like one of the oldest buildings in the town. Again, you got the eagle there. Seems like very American. Seems like golden eagle. Must be on the coat of arms or something. Not too sure. Looks like a missed today's free demonstration. British infantry weapons from the last 300 years. A castle from about 1070 AD. At every turn it's like, thou shall not pass. Clapped off. Sim similar sort of vernacular design. But it's actually from around 1790s, this tower, Laura's Tower, called. Designed by none other than Thomas Telford. 
It's actually locked off. I think they only open it once a year. Or uh, some MPs, da daughter's 21st birthday present. This is what they used to give as a birthday present in those days, apparently. And uh, quite a good view down, looking down onto the tracks and River Seven and surrounding rolling hills of Shropshire there. So we'll go off, I think that's in the direction of uh, Cheshire, if I'm not mistaken. And over there, a bit of a walk, then probably a walk out there. It's so tall you can see Britain's largest Doric column from the late 1700s again statue at the top what a paper day in Kiel can't see anything check that out inside old school uh, car there old English car same ones that do the Morris Minor are they but that was later on Went a bit downhill from there. I think. A little walk outside the town centre. Got this sort of quite largish warehouse building from the late 1700s. The flax mill, Maltings warehouse building. Bit of a view of what looks like inside of, or barley covered on the floor. Obviously, that's not from the period though. Don't know why they've done that. Part way through being done up, 1797. Now it explains why I've come to see it here, because it's a precursor to modern day skyscrapers. Again, like the Oriel Chambers I mentioned about in Liverpool. One of the first modern buildings in the world, first iron frame building in the world. Obviously that's all inside, you can't really see it from here. A little brick on the outside. But they've recently done it up, renovated it. There's a hard day's craft at the mill and run across the little uh, pub over the road beside it. Imagine all like the 800 odd workers each morning trudging along on the way to work. Probably lived just nearby in like little houses, probably since knocked down, little row houses. Probably a bit of a grim existence back then. Well, it's first iron frame building. And parent of skyscrapers. Grade one listed for a reason. Peaking. Do tours and stuff. Close at the moment, but give a bit of an idea. Security having a good go up at me. For some reason, like it's not a tourist attraction. Don't think there's too much to see at this time. Cafe's closing soon. Interesting to come back and do a little tour though, I think, inside. And get a better view of probably all the iron structural work inside. See the back. Courtyard, imagine all the workers congregating more of a break they might get probably 15 hour days or something I imagine so like the inner workings there pistons pumps model as well of relief obviously using the water from the river seven to pump up and power it Probably uh, named Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury comes from uh, original meaning in Latin as uh, the fort in amongst the scrubland or shrubland fort. People from Shrewsbury and I think Shropshire as a whole are referred to as uh, Salopians from some of the uh, original name for the like, Shrewsbury Shropshire as a whole. Uh, Salop or Salop. Bit of an interesting history there. Ties to the uh, Civil War. Like Chester, some of the original sand walls, structure the sand wall survived. Kind of plopped in the middle of the uh, all these Georgian terraces. You got this older tower, medieval looking tower, probably part of the old 
defensive town walls. Can't go in the, uh, the town wall system. Looks like it's open then. Some shit I like. Turn out to be a nice evening gear actually, but gotta head back down to the station now. Not a boot. See the castle from the platform actually, in the abbey just down there. See its main oldest sites without even leaving the station. Just get off the train, have a quick look and then back on.